Next, I do want to introduce our guest today. Tony Perkins is the president of the Family Research Council. You'll also see his program every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Washington Watch. And uh, he's been a guest on the program before, but uh, uh, Tony, thank you for taking time to join with us today. How are you doing? Good, Tom. Judge, good to be with you guys. How are you all today? Well, I think we're doing good. Um, I know there's a lot of issues going on in this country and around the world. And um, again, tomorrow is an election day. I think there's some issues. We're located in Ohio where there's a uh, issue on the ballot uh, or maybe more than one that I think uh, Christians need to be aware of. But um, I know that you're not just focused on uh, Washington or, or the U.S., but really on worldwide issues and, and how Christians can be called uh, to respond. And, and one of the situations that I think has been uh, forefront in the news in the past several weeks is what's happening uh, with uh, the Hamas attacks on Israel and, and the response, what's happening there in the Middle East. Uh, would you uh, give us a little bit of your uh, input? Uh, you may see we have our prayer shawls here on the table and we've been doing our part to help support Israel through this, but uh, what is your thought on how Christians should be uh, responding to the events that we've seen unfolding? Well, I think there's several things to look at, Tom. Number, number one is that in, as Bible-believing Christians, you know, those who bless Israel are blessed. And so that's been the track record of the United States for many years, that we have stood with our ally Israel since 1948. When they became a nation, we have stood steadfastly with them fluctuated somewhat. I do think that relationship is being tested under the current administration. This, this weekend here in our nation's capital, we saw these pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian demonstrations literally uh, besieging the White House. Uh, very troubling. You know, Allah Akbar being yelled at the gates of uh, the White House. And then last week we had the president, vice president, declaring that they were going to uh, launch the first ever initiative to protect against Islamophobia. Well, the attacks have been against uh, Jewish Americans. We've seen this over the last year. In fact, the FBI just recently released their data. 1120 some attacks against Jewish people based upon their faith during the same time about 150 toward those who have, are the Islamic faith. The, the two are not on par. I, I say all that to say this, Tom, is that United States historically has stood with Israel and I think from a Christian standpoint it's very important we stand against anti-Semitism. Historically we see that, uh, and, and I saw this in my role as the uh, chairman of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom during the Trump administration as we were tracking anti-Semitism in Western Europe, is that that is a precursor to intolerance toward biblical Christianity and biblical faith. And so we need to stand with the Jewish people, the Jewish state. If not, if we just step aside, I can predict this with pretty much with certainty that we're going to see an all out assault on Christianity in America. Wow. Well, uh, I thank you for uh, standing up uh, against anti-Semitism. I think one thing uh, that TCT has uh, seen over the past few weeks is that we have uh, a responsibility to use this media platform we have to stand against some of the very things uh, that you're talking about. I've been to Israel many times. Uh, the last time I was there, uh, saw rocket attacks. Now, not uh, to the extent that the Israeli people have been facing over the past several weeks, uh, but it's a thing that has been ongoing um, for literally thousands of years, really. Um, and so thank you for what you're doing uh, to do that. Now, uh, you are kind of uh, somewhat of our expert uh, your, with your program, Washington Watch, on what's happening in Washington and uh, across the country. And I know tomorrow uh, is an election day, a lot of different things. Um, we're located here in Ohio, so we know um, issue one um, and the abortion issue. Uh, we got to see uh, Roe v. Wade overturned, which was uh, wonderful, but we know that now there's these state level uh, elections coming up. and so. Um, 
Um, what is it that uh, you're concerned about or, or that you want to share with Christians about uh, what we should be uh, looking at in the elections that are happening tomorrow? Well, Ohio is a very critical state. All the eyes are on Washington, are on uh, Ohio as it pertains to the sanctity of human life, because there is a, an, um, there is a, a, a constitutional amendment. It's issue one on the ballot tomorrow that in Ohio, if this passes, it basically will take the issue out of the hands of lawmakers, out of the people. It will enshrine into the Constitution what the left has been advocating for. This is abortion without restrictions all the way up until the moment of birth. So this is an attack on the unborn. It's an attack on parental rights. Uh, this is far-reaching, and the left always tries to, they, they are disingenuous to say the, the least when it comes to pushing these things. They don't tell you that you're going to uh, eliminate parental notification. Uh, all of these different laws that over the years have been added just to, you know, slow this process down, allow people to think through this before they make this life altering decision of ending a pregnancy. All of that goes away. And this uh, becomes a part of the state's constitution. And to show you how, how, how much this is being focused on, uh, Tom and judges, we've seen nearly $80 million spent on this issue in Ohio, maybe beyond that point right now. Most of that, uh, the lion's share of it, coming from out of the state to promote this Amendment 1, this Issue 1. And I would also add, uh, Tom, there's also Issue two on the ballot, which would legalize recreational marijuana. So I would strongly, strongly encourage uh, Ohioans to go out and vote no on one and two and share this with your friends on your social media, call your family, your neighbors, and ensure that they go out and vote tomorrow. Wow. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time to give your input. Again, I know you're uh, meeting with lawmakers uh, in Washington as well as uh, across the country and certainly have um, an insight that is important uh, from a Christian perspective to be able to focus on. Now, uh, kind of talking about some of these uh, issues, especially in relation to uh, the abortion issue, I think many uh, Christians have spent so many years thinking, well, you know, striking down Roe v. Wade uh, is is the end to it. But now, uh, us as Ohioans uh, are seeing that uh, coming up again, another decision to be made. But uh, for our viewers, especially across the country, um, what are you seeing? Where do you see um, states moving forward? What may be on ballots next year or in the years to come, as far as that's concerned? Well, you're right to point out, Tom, that many people thought, well, Roe v. Wade was overturned, therefore the issue was resolved. No, actually what it did is it allowed the states now and policymakers. It was taken out of the hands of policymakers back in 1973 when the Supreme Court imposed upon the entire nation um, elective abortions until birth, no restrictions. Now, we had some subsequent court decisions that dialed that back slightly, but now this is in the hands of policymakers, both federal and state. And so this is why we've got to be informed and engaged in making sure we're electing, number one, um, men and women who understand the sanctity of human life and the implications of choosing and creating a culture of death. But then when we have these ballot initiatives, they're using this uh, in Ohio as kind of a test ground, and they're going to continue to move state by state trying to push this pro-abortion agenda. So every citizen has a responsibility to stand for life, whether that's in the, in the voting booth or whether it is supporting care pregnancy centers or uh, pastors preaching on these issues of the sanctity of human life. This issue is far, far from resolved. It simply is now back into the arena where we have the ability to shape the policies going forward. Wow. Well, um, I do appreciate uh, what you're sharing with us about uh, some of the things that us in Ohio uh, have to do. Uh, tomorrow and have to vote on tomorrow, um, and again, uh, how that may shape what the future looks like across the country. And again, we do have viewers uh, around the country, and so getting to more of the national uh, level, we know that there has been a little bit of a um, 
uh, I don't know what you would call the situation with the Speaker of the House uh, in the U.S. I know that you've been uh, friends with uh, Congressman Mike Johnson for uh, many years, and I think um, many of us are that aren't connected there in Washington are thinking, what's what's been going on? All these votes, uh, what's the situation there? So, uh, just uh, having a little bit of an insider perspective, what would you share uh, with our viewers about what uh, that new role, uh, putting him as Speaker of the House, uh, does for the U.S.? Well, Tom, I, it's, uh, it, it's a source of hope. I was actually talking with the speaker this morning. The, the, I've known Mike since he was in, uh, was in law school, and we've worked together on a number of things. We're both from Louisiana. He helped me on a number of pieces of legislation I worked on when I was in public office. And I, I know he and his wife and his kids have known him for years. He is, a, he is what he says he is. All right? when you, uh, if you listen to his speech when he was... Uh, elected as speaker and he spoke for the first time what he had to say was very genuine uh, he recognizes that God's hand is upon us and directs our steps and leads us he and he and he said this on uh, a television interview he said you want to know what my worldview is pick up a Bible uh, that's my worldview. Of course, he's been <laughs> mocked by the left, but that's exactly what we as Christians want to see. We want to know that, that someone is going to be guided by their faith. I mean, we pray for righteous government. I mean, we're, we, we, want it, we want good government. Well, government takes on the character of the people we put in it. If we want righteous government, we need men and women who know God and are willing to follow God and serve him. And that's the kind of uh, the man that Mike Johnson is. Well, thank you for sharing that, and uh, these are the types of things that is exactly why I wanted to ask you to join us on the program today, especially with the election coming up uh, tomorrow, um, it, certainly in our state of Ohio, but uh, I know elections across uh, the country. Um, but these are the types of things that I think Christians need to stay on top of, not just, uh, oh, I got to go vote tomorrow. Let me figure out <laughs> which boxes I'm going to check. And so uh, your program, Washington Watch, that uh, uh, was recently added to the TST network and can be seen uh, Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, I think discusses a lot of these issues on a regular uh, basis. Again, there's going to be elections next year that we need to uh, be involved in. And uh, so share with us a little bit about uh, some of your uh, goals for the program and uh, what our viewers can uh, expect to see as they tune in. Well, first off, we're so thankful to partner with TCT and just appreciate the partnership there of allowing us to have that important platform of being able to communicate with Christians our responsibility to be salt and light. And that's what this is about. Uh, quite frankly, I, I never envisioned I would be in politics. My, I spent uh, time in the Marine Corps, was a police officer, worked in anti-terrorism, uh, before the Lord called me into the political realm. I was never interested in that. Uh, but I see the importance of how our policies shape the culture in which we live. And we need to be speaking into that as Christians. Now, I'll just say, Tom, one of the resources we have available, especially as you pointed out, there's elections all across the, the state tomorrow. We've got uh, elections in Virginia, we've got some elections in Pennsylvania, some in Kentucky and Ohio. We have a resource that people can go to frcaction.org and there's a tab there on voter resources and we actually have some voter guides to help people make these decisions about candidates and different uh, issues. So on our program, we have the newsmakers and our goal is to continue to bring them unfiltered by the legacy media directly to your viewers so that they can hear for themselves what's happening here in our nation's capital. Because I have seen it increasingly that the legacy media cannot be trust, trusted. Uh, they have an agenda and they are pursuing that agenda. We have an agenda. We have an agenda too. That is to tell the truth and to help Christians be responsible citizens to live out their faith in such a way is that it shapes the world around them. And so that's our mission here at Washington Watch. 
Wow. Well, Tony, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you for, for what you're doing as far as putting the program together. I know that our viewers certainly appreciate it. And I do want to encourage uh, those that want to find out more about the Family Research Council, go to frc.org. Um, and for those that want to connect more with you, uh, the website is tonyperkins.com. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you. Thank you, Tom. Great to be with you guys today.